Shares versus property. Which is the better investment? Us Australians have a well-known love affair with property. There's a firm belief that the value of houses will never go down. But for many, simply purchasing an investment property is out of reach. With house prices pushing all-time highs, not everyone can make the choice to invest in property. For a lot of young investors, the share market is an easier and lower cost way to build wealth over time. This video explains the similarities, the differences, and some of the pros and cons of both. Stick around to the end of the video to find out which asset class is best for you. Let's have a look. Potential for investment growth. Both investments offer the potential to grow in value over time, and it's hard to say which will grow more in coming years. A 2015 research paper from the Federal Reserve of San Francisco titled The Rate of Return on Everything looked at nearly 150 years of data to uncover very long-term returns across a range of asset classes and geographies. Australian housing returned 6.37% per annum in real terms over the full sample of data, while shares returned 7.81% per annum. Looking at just the data since 1950, housing performed better, returning 8.29% per annum versus 7.57% per annum for shares. However, looking at just the more modern series since 1980, the pendulum swings back, with shares returning 8.78% per annum versus 7.16% for housing. Comparisons have their limitations, of course. It's important to keep in mind that there have been periods of boom and bust for both asset classes. Returns change further once costs and borrowing are introduced into the equation. It's also important to keep in mind past performance is not indicative of future performance. Regardless of how you cut the data though, it's clear that both shares and property have produced attractive long-term returns. Speaking of long-term returns, one of the most important investments you can make is in your education. If you're learning something from this video, hit subscribe. We put out content explaining investing, financial markets, and exchange-traded funds to help you on your investment journey. Back to the video. Income. Investing in either property or equities can provide income. Shares can get income from dividends, and property can get income from rental payments. Over the 12 months to 30th of June 2023, our Australia 200 ETF, which invests in 200 of the largest companies by market capitalization listed on the ASX, paid out a distribution yield of 6.4%. Additionally, you can buy certain ETFs that specifically hold shares that generate high dividends. Property can also generate income if it's occupied. In Sydney, houses offer an average gross rental yield of 2.8% per annum, while units offer 4.1%. It's a similar story in Melbourne, with houses offering an average gross rental yield of 3% per annum and units offering 4.5%. Generally speaking, the income received on property is more predictable than the income from shares. There's no guarantee that a company will pay out the same dividend that it paid out last period, or that it will pay a dividend at all. But rental income is stickier, with renters required to give notice as to when they might vacate a property if need be. So while either shares or property can provide income, income from property can be more stable if the property is occupied and tenants are paying rent. Maintenance and transaction costs. When owning property, you must assume yearly maintenance costs associated with repairs, upkeep, and upgrades. If you use a property manager, there will be costs associated with that too. Other costs associated with starting a search and the initial purchase of a property include search fees, pest and building reports, legal and conveyancing fees, and stamp duty. Maintaining property can be expensive as well. With shares, depending on how you invest, there may be transaction costs when you buy and sell. In addition, if you're using an advisor or broker, there may be fees or costs for the advice and to manage a portfolio, which is usually calculated as a percentage of your portfolio value. If you use actively managed funds or exchange traded funds, aka ETFs, to obtain equities exposure, there will be management costs built into the price of those funds. Generally speaking, the costs associated with buying and selling shares will be lower than the all-in cost of buying and maintaining a property. Ability to enter and exit the market quickly. Buying a property takes time. It's not easy coming up with the deposit needed to secure a mortgage. Usually, unless you put down at least 20% of the purchase costs, there will likely be the additional expense of mortgage insurance. It can take years to save up for these costs, and then, of course, you take on the commitment of a mortgage payment that has to be made every month. Additionally, it's time consuming and expensive to sell a house. In the case of an emergency, where you need to tap into your investments to make a payment in a short time frame, you can't do that with property. By contrast, if you are ready to invest in shares, you can get started with as little as $500 or even less depending on your broker's trading limits. All you need to do is open an account with a trading platform. You can also sell your shares in a pinch, receiving cash back from the broker, usually within two business days of placing your trade. We call this ability to buy and sell in a short time frame liquidity. 
Most shares are considered highly liquid, whereas property would be considered illiquid. Hands-on involvement. With shares, you can invest in companies run by some of the most influential people of our generation. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Mark Zuckerberg come to mind when thinking of founders of companies that dominate the globe and continue to grow and improve their business. As a shareholder, you can own part of these businesses without having to be involved in their day-to-day -day operations. When investing directly in property, there is greater hands-on involvement. You can take on becoming a landlord yourself, or you can hire a property manager, which reduces your workload but comes at a cost. For some investors in property, this can be an opportunity to add lots of value. Renovations and upgrades to a property can help boost its value, and having direct control over that increase can be both profitable and satisfying. And with this hands-on involvement comes another benefit of property, leverage. Leverage is borrowing. When you borrow money, you are considered leveraged. Leverage is usually a huge consideration when it comes to buying property because you usually borrow a substantial portion of the cost. Here's an example. Let's assume you decide to buy a property for $1 million. And let's say the down payment on the mortgage is 20% of the value of the property. In this case, you are 80% leveraged. This means that your gains and losses are magnified by four times. This borrowing can give a huge boost to returns if the property value increases. Of course, you might be able to leverage your share portfolio to some extent, but far fewer share investors than property investors leverage their investment. Share investment loans, known as margin loans, typically charge a higher interest rate than property loans. So who wins? What's the better investment, property or shares? The answer, of course, is that it depends. If you're looking for a low cost, low maintenance way to get started investing and need liquidity to buy and sell on short notice, shares might be right for you. Equally, if you're looking for a long-term investment, that you can get income on for many years with the opportunity to use leverage to enhance your returns, property might suit you better. Both are valid investments and this video goes through some of the benefits and detriments of each. If you liked watching it, subscribe to the channel below. We'll see you next time.